Hi peeps, welcome back to Mental Health Naps. My name is Kaisa and this is where we talk about mental health, sleep apnea, and other difficult things through smiles not tears. And we do this by focusing in on one word and its definition and or my musings about said word. And the word of the day is actually bewilderment. If you ask me, it's just a really fancy, classy way of saying you're confused or perplexed. The reason why we're talking about bewilderment today is because I think it's kind of part of the process when it comes to processing what you're going through in life, especially when it comes to balancing your mental health. And I was actually on the phone with my sibling the other day, and we were kind of talking about all of the things in my health that I've gone through over the years. It's kind of been a lot. He's like, you know what? I have just, that's been my whole life being your younger sibling. It's just, I never know what's going to happen with you. I'm always in a state of bewilderment when something happens because it's like, oh, we just got over that this but now this is happening so I have to deal with this you know it was kind of an eye-opening conversation for me because it's like you could be the one going through something hard something physical something mental something emotional but you know the people around you who care about you are there along for the ride as well sometimes when you're faced with a really hard situation and you're not quite sure how to deal with it sometimes you're left in a place of bewilderment because you're like how did I get here why am I here? Why is there this choice that I never thought I'd have to choose <laughs> or have to deal with? It's just very interesting. Um, my sibling, he told the story on the phone that I thought was funny, but he's just like, just you've just always been a very bewildering person. And he said that when we were kids, there was one Sunday afternoon, because Sunday afternoon was a time that was just designated playtime for me and my sibling. We had this huge antique wooden table that was in our dining room. And with the way that the antique table is, we still have it, is like you can pull it apart to make it longer and bigger and you can put boards in the middle and then like close it so you can fit people. But because of this, there's mechanisms and joints underneath the table that kind of make for cliffs and ledges. And so my sibling and I, we'd like to take our dolls or our action figures and play under the table because then it would make like more interesting terrain. And there was one particular Sunday where we were playing a game under the table and our dad, he calls to my sibling and says, hey, I need you outside for a sec. Are you okay to come help me or do this instead or whatever? And my sibling was like, yeah, that sounds great, dad, I'm coming. And apparently I was not done playing. Apparently I wanted to keep playing. I don't remember this memory at all. Something else to understand is that I grew up in a family of just two kids so it was either play with my sibling or play alone and I was not a big fan of just playing alone. On the phone present day my sibling says when he's telling the story listen I got up to go hang with dad outside or do whatever something with dad outside and you stopped me and you said are you really done playing? Don't you want to have happy childhood memories when we're grown up? Uh, apparently that's what I said. Mind you, like we're kids. He said my next thought honestly was Kaisa, I'm eight. I was like 10 or so. On the phone he's just laughing to himself. He's just like that's kind of been you your whole life. You're just this older soul who just throws things out like whatever and it's just left me in a state of bewilderment for how you deal with things, how you see things, and also with the things that you've had to go through in life. We laugh about it on the phone and then I was thinking about it of just, you know, you have people in your life that are with you from the beginning to end and even if they weren't there for maybe a huge chunk of it and it just feels like they've been there and they're such a great support system like I think it's important to acknowledge that when you're going through something hard it's probably hard for them to watch you go through it as well there's a chance that if you're feeling the bewilderment and you're taking time to process they might need to take time to process and work through their bewilderment as well it was just such a reminder to me that going through some of the things I've gone through have been really hard for me that people around me who care about me are going through the same thing as well. Not from my point of view, but from their point of view. If you feel bewilderment for your situation in your mental health, it's okay to take time to work through it. It's okay to take time to process what's going on. I know I don't do well mentally if I try to rush a situation or rush a decision or I jump to conclusions. I try not to do that to stress myself out more, but I think recognizing 
nice that if you find yourself confused about why you're in an area of your life or why something happened to you, recognize that that's normal and recognize that there are probably people who are close to you that know what's going on, that they're probably experiencing some of the very same feelings you are just from their perspective, which is more indirect because they're it's happening to you. I think there's quite a bit of support that comes from that. Anyway, that's all I have to say about bewilderment today. I hope you have a wonderful day and until the next one, have a nice nap.